How's it going? This is James Traley from James Films, and today we are taking a photo scan I got with the app Polycam in my iPhone 13 and bringing it into Blender to make a fun little tropical scene here at Georgetown in the middle of the Caribbean. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with this one, and I wanted to walk you through the process kind of on a broader strokes overview from cleaning up the scan to adding in assets and making the scene what it is. So you can see the scan is a little bit messy here when I bring it in from Polycam. I actually used the LiDAR functionality of the Polycam app with my iPhone 13 Pro to create this one. My first time actually using LiDAR entirely for a photo scan. Pretty happy with the results, a little bit of blobbiness, a little bit of artifacting here. You can see around the windows it struggled a bit. Uh, but you know, just a little bit of time cleaning this up and it looked pretty awesome. I actually made this cleaned up model available to my patrons over on my Patreon. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, models like this coming up, and as I get the hang of using this app, Polycam, with my new phone, it's going to only get better. And you're going to have a lot of really cool assets, like really cool buildings and rocks and trees and stumps and things for you to be able to download and use in your own renders. I just wanted to show you how I used this particular building for my render and had a lot of fun putting this together. So you can see I'm adding in a little bit of geometry with the solidify modifier and just kind of cleaning up some of those harsh edges and adding in some placeholders for the windows. Those windows, like I said, were kind of a mess and typically photo scanning struggles a lot with reflective surfaces, but alas, we were able to fix that quickly and get to setting up the camera. So I like to define this pretty early on just to know where I'm gonna be looking. And for this one, I only scan from one angle. So that is the angle I had to choose here for my render. I set to 1200 by 1500 for my resolution and just kind of crop it to a 35 millimeter camera, a little bit of wide angle to it looking at this scene. I think it looks really nice here. And we can kind of get towards setting up some initial lighting just to see where the shadows and light are gonna be falling on our mesh. I like to do this as early as possible just to get an idea for my scene. And then I will constantly be going back in and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking to get it to where I'm really happy with how it looks. For this one, I kind of wanted some nice sun rays coming in and hitting the front of this building from the left coming down to the right. So you can see how I set that up, and then I used a architectural glass material from the Blender uh, kit add-on to texture out those windows. And then it was on to actually adding in some more elements and patching up those holes. So obviously there's a, a big gap in the bottom of this mesh, so I wanted to fill that out with some rocks from the Quixel Megascans add-on. These worked really well to kind of fill out those spaces, and you can see kind of underneath the left side of this building, there's a big gap. So I just kind of filled that out and put some stuff underneath too and you know, move my camera around a bit more to frame things up and kind of filled out the frame. And I'm always keeping an eye on composition. Sometimes it's helpful to actually turn on composition guides and I actually swapped over to this awesome add-on physical starlight and atmosphere linked in the description from the Blender Market to make a procedural sky. This gave me so much more control over the lighting of my scene and how it impacted the shadows and highlights in my mesh on these really cool rocks and on the, the actual scan itself. So I had a lot of fun putting that together and really just dialing in the parameters to get it to where I was happy with it. So that's looking pretty good. So let's add in some plants and foliage. There's quite a lot of add-ons out there and I'll touch on a couple that I use for this one. I really like using the Terrascape add-on quite a bit for some fun tropical assets. This integrates really well with the uh, wonderful asset Scatter, which is also available on the Blender Market. Both of these are available on the Blender Market, linked in the description below. I have a lot of fun supporting these creators. They're really awesome people doing fantastic work. Um, really, I think, I, I know people say Blender's free, but there's some people doing some awesome work and development for this community in the space in the way of add-ons in particular, like nature assets and stuff like that. And really, I think it's, it's nice to throw uh, some support their way for the work they're doing because it's really advancing the software and making it an industry standard. So I had a lot of fun kind of designing this out. I added in a roof using some uh, really cool objects from the Quixel Megascans library as well. And then just kind of played around with my mesh a bit more to make it, you know, look a little bit cleaner. Had some fun with that. Uh, and then continue just kind of filling out the frame with these plants. I like to kind of frame up the scene. So as if you're looking through some tropical plants into the scene here itself, and just kind of filled that out. And again, kept an eye on the right rendered view just to see how stuff is filling out my frame. Um, I kind of like these really nice, dense, clustered scenes with a lot of different tropical plants and things like that. Uh, and also have a lot of really cool details with the ground as well. So you see I add in some sand here for the part that's going to be actually underwater here. I'm going to kind of fill the scene with a bit of water uh, to make it look really interesting in that regard. And, you know, adding in this little sandy texture with just a little bit of displacement, 
looks really cool. I use the scatter add-on with a couple of these really cool tropical assets. Do a little bit of masking to get them to fit where I want them to and add in some camera clipping as well. And then it's on to the final shapes and tweaks for this render. So what I did was actually added in a lamp from the Blender uh, kit add-on as well and attached this to the wall where there's kind of this distorted lamp that didn't actually get picked up at all from a distance, unfortunately, just because I was far away from the building. It kind of is just like this flat 2D plane on the building. So what I did is slapped a lamp, uh, an actual lamp 3D mod model over top that and then actually selected that lamp and went into the UV and just kind of shifted it around to try to kind of mask it out using a different part of the brick wall. Uh, and that actually worked out pretty well. So just kind of had to shuffle some parts around and you can't even notice. So patch that hole up there and it's looking pretty good. Uh, just did a little bit more tweaks with the textures for the glass window and this was pretty much the final scene. You know, I always go in and add a couple more plans and kind of revisit things. Sometimes I'll actually even just close down the software and open it up the next day and just kind of see how my viewpoint has changed on the composition itself. And that was it. I went from this scan of a building here in Washington, D.C. and took that into Blender and made this fun tropical scene. I hope you enjoyed this kind of broad overview approach. I do have a really fun tutorial closer to an hour coming out uh, for the fall scene that you're seeing right now. I'm in the process of editing it and kind of cutting it to a really comprehensive and easy to follow tutorial, even for beginners. It's a pretty simple tutorial. Uh, and so I wanted to make that as approachable for you as possible. So definitely keep an eye out for that. It'll probably come out a little bit after the holidays here uh, as I work to get this edited. But thanks so much to my patrons over on my Patreon as well. Your support is always wonderful, means the world to me, and I will catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks so much for dropping by.